Today we're going to be talking about annuities and perpetuities. First, we'll talk about what a perpetuity is and how you can solve for its present value. Next, we'll talk about annuities and how you can solve for their present and future values. And lastly, we'll take a look at how to do all of it in Excel. Let's start with perpetuities. A perpetuity is a stream of fixed payments delivered at fixed intervals for, well, forever. Suppose my parents decided to give me an allowance of $10 every month and never stopped. So I'd receive $10 each month forever. What some might call a failure to launch, I would call a perpetuity. We don't see many real life examples of perpetuities, but some notable ones are consoles, which are British bonds that have no end date or maturity date, meaning that for as long as you own it, you'll receive a fixed payment. We'll talk more about bonds when we discuss annuities later. A second example is preferred stock, stock that pays a fixed dividend or cash payment to shareholders forever, or for as long as the company is still in business. Nothing truly goes on forever, but as long as the time horizon is sufficiently long and is undetermined, we can treat the investment as a perpetuity. Without a future date in mind though, we can't calculate the future value of the investment, and so we only consider the present value of a perpetuity. Let's try an example. Suppose your pension plan will pay you $1,000 each month for the rest of your life, with the first payment arriving at the start of next period. The time value of money principle teaches us that if we receive the same fixed payment each period, that money is worth less and less each period in today's dollars. So to calculate the present value of the entire pension, we basically have to calculate the present value of every monthly payment individually and then add all of them together. Let's say our annual discount rate is 12%. Since discount rates are quoted annually, or in APR, then we know that our effective rate, which is the monthly rate that matches with our monthly pension payments, must be 12% divided by 12 months per year, 1%. Our first payment will have a present value of $1,000 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01, or 1,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.01. Our second payment will have a present value of 1,000 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01, also known as 1,000 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 squared, since we must discount this cash flow for two months. Our third payment will have a present value of 1,000 times 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 cubed, as we discount it back for three months. But didn't we say that these monthly payments go on forever? So calculating the present value of each one would take, well, forever. Luckily, there's a simple formula we can use instead. You might remember the formula for an infinite geometric series from high school math. Well, a perpetuity is actually an infinite geometric sequence, with each term becoming increasingly smaller as it's divided by 1 plus 0 0.01, which we can refer to as our discount factor. The formula for this is A, our fixed payment, divided by one minus the discount factor, which we said is one over one plus r. But one minus one over one plus r is just r. So our whole formula can be written as a over r. The intuition behind this formula is that since the present value of each payment will get smaller and smaller as time goes on, it will approach zero. And eventually we'll reach a point where the next payment adds nothing extra to our present value. Even though the theory is complicated, this formula is even easier to remember than our present value formula. Let's try it here. We'll plug in $1,000 for our initial payment, and then plug in the period rate, which is 0.01, to get a present value of $100,000 for this perpetuity. Now that we understand perpetuities, let's talk about annuities. An annuity is similar to a perpetuity in that it involves a steady inflow of fixed payments at fixed intervals just like the allowance example we discussed. However, unlike a perpetuity, an annuity does not go on forever. We receive a finite series of payments. My parents eventually cut me off and tell me to get a job. Other examples of annuities include mortgage or pension payments, regular deposits to an investment account, and most notably, bond investments. There are two ways of calculating the present value of an annuity. First, let's say you put $50 into an investment account at the end of each year for three years to save up for your next vacation. If we want to find the present value of those payments, we can simply solve for the present value of each payment and add them together. But what if you put in $50 per year for 10 years? Personally, I can't be bothered to calculate 10 present values. 
A faster method is to use a version of the perpetuity formula we discussed earlier. Let's compare this 10-year annuity to a situation where you would pay $50 each year in perpetuity. We're interested in calculating the present value of this section here. Basically, we want to know the value of the investment if cash flows continue forever, minus the value of the investment if cash flows continue forever starting 10 years from now. Essentially, the value of our annuity is the value of one perpetuity minus another perpetuity beginning later. So we can use this formula to solve for the present value of our annuity. Recall that our cost of capital, or discount rate, is still 8%. We'll take $50 divided by 0 0.08 minus the second perpetuity, which is worth $50 divided by 0 0.08 10 years from now, or in today's dollars, 50 divided by 0 0.08 divided by 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of 10. You can think of this as either discounting the $50 to today's terms before solving for the perpetuity, or discounting the value of the entire perpetuity to today's terms. 50 over 0 0.08 is 625, and 50 over 0 0.08 over 1.08 to the 10 is 289.5. So the present value of the annuity is worth 625 minus 289.5 or $335.50. We can remove like terms and express this formula as a over r times one minus one over one plus r to the power of n. Unlike perpetuities, we can solve for the future value of an annuity. You can choose to apply the future value formula to the present value we just calculated, or adapt the annuity formula directly. To solve for the future value, we simply multiply our present value by 1 plus r to the power of n. Applying this to the formula, we're left with a over r times 1 plus r to the power of n minus a over r, as 1 plus r to the power of n cancels in the second term. This time, we are compounding the first term to express it in terms of its dollar value 10 years from now, and leaving the second term, which is already expressed in future dollars. So in 10 years, you'll have $724 to spend on your vacation. I see some hostels in your future. You will see the formula rearranged in several different ways, but don't be alarmed. The logic is always the same. Just use the version of the formula that you're most comfortable with. Lastly, let's look at how we can solve for perpetuities and annuities in Excel. To calculate the present value of an annuity, we'll type equals PV and fill in the rate, 8%, the number of periods, 10, and the payment, $50. When they ask for a future value here, they're referring to an extra lump sum payment at the end of the investment. We don't have any payments besides our regular fixed payment, so we'll put zero. We get the same answer that we did solving by hand. To calculate the future value of an annuity, we'll type equals FV and fill in the rate, number of periods, the payment, and once again, ignore the option to put in a value for present value which refers to an additional payment made at the beginning of the investment, which we don't have here. What about solving for a perpetuity? We can manipulate the PV formula to work for perpetuities by making up an extremely large value for n, since the longer the time horizon, the more the present value of each cash flow approaches zero, and the more the present value of the investment approaches its value at infinity. Going back to our perpetuity example, let's plug in equals 0 0.01 for the monthly rate, 10,000 for the number of periods, not too large or Excel will return an error, and 1,000 for the payment. This returns the same value we calculated using our perpetuity formula. Remember when I said that solving for the present value of every single annuity payment would be too much effort? Well, Excel makes it simple. If you don't want to use the PV and FV formulas, you can simply set up a grid like this one in Excel. We'll type in our fixed payment and our discount rate so that we can reference them in our formulas. Then we'll put a year in each column. I like to drag this over so Excel copies the pattern. Next, let's type in our present value formula to solve for the present value of each payment. We'll type in our payment, cell X, times 1 plus our discount rate, cell Y, to the power of the year, cell Z. Remember to absolute reference the fixed payment and discount rate cells, because now we're going to drag this over. See how the year value moves, but our payment and discount rate don't. Now, we simply add up these 10 cells. Notice that we get the same present value as we did using the previous two methods. So in this video, we went over perpetuities and how to solve for their present value. Next, we discussed annuities and derived the annuity formula to solve for their present and future values. And lastly, we looked at how to apply the PV and FV formulas to solving these problems. Thanks for watching!